Hello and welcome to our webinar, Fall Adult Announcements. I'm Annie Bostrom, Associate Editor in Adult Books. Before we begin, I'd like to go over some technical details. The audience is in listen-only mode, but we welcome any questions you may have. On the bottom of your screen is a toolbar with a section for Q&A. If you have a question or need technical assistance, simply click Q&A and type your message into the box that appears. We will do our best to respond to all tech-related questions and will pass along all other questions to today's panelists so they can follow up with you after the webinar. Links to today's slides were sent directly to you from Zoom at the start of the webinar, but you can also download them at any time by copying the URLs on this screen into your web browser. On Monday, all attendees will receive a follow-up email containing links to today's slide presentation, certificate of completion, and video recording. Today, we have the pleasure of hearing from Annie Mazes, Senior Manager of Adult Library Marketing at Workman Publishing, Elizabeth Anderson, Senior Marketing Manager at Houghton Mifflin Harcourt, Ellen Whitaker, Marketing Associate at Bloomsbury, Talia Scherer, Senior Director of Library Marketing at Macmillan, and Christopher Connolly, Senior Marketing Associate at HarperCollins Publishers. First, we'll hear from Annie Maces. Annie handles adult library marketing for all imprints at Workman Publishing Company. She also heads up the ALMA, Adult Library Marketing Association Committee. Some favorite titles include The Orphan Master's Son and Lady Pancake and Sir French Toast. After nearly 10 years, she still can't believe she gets to book talk with librarians every day. Hashtag dream job. Thanks for being here, Annie. Thank you so much. Um, yes, I am with Workman Publishing. This is our social channels. If you'd like to reach out to us or follow along with what's going on. Next slide, please. Um, that's me, that's my email address. <laughs> Next slide, please. I'm going to start just mentioning some recent faves that have come out. Impersonation is an excellent book club book. Two women together, they make the perfect feminist mother for fans of female persuasion or Mrs. Fletcher. Really good stuff. Um, and next slide, please. Starting with His Only Wife, I am such a fan of this book. It is incredibly fun read. It was called Crazy Rich Asians for West Africa with a healthy splash of feminism in Kirkus's starred review. It features Afi Tekpol, who is a young seamstress living in a small town in Ghana with her widowed mother. She is given a life-changing opportunity when the wealthy family of Alikum Ganyo proposes marriage on his behalf. She doesn't know this man really, she knows of him. He stands a stand-in to their wedding and she doesn't meet him until weeks later. And so she's sort of on this strange, the strange realization that this is maybe not the ex opportunity she thought it was. Um, and really then the book goes on to go into what she deserves, what she wants for herself, what she's not willing to compromise on. It's so fun. It's very commercial read, but there's a lot of really wonderful stuff in here for fans of Chimamanda Adichie or Candace Cardi Williams. And it goes on sale September 1st, so you can read it real soon. Um, Love Zach is a ultimately inspiring but slightly heartbreaking story of Zach Easter, a young man from a small town in Iowa. He committed suicide at 24 because he no longer wanted to continue his losing battle against the traumatic brain injuries he had sustained as a no holds barred football player for his whole life. This is incredibly reported, it's very moving. Award winning sports writer Reed Forgrave speaks to Zach's family, his friends, his coaches cutting age brain scientists, psychologists, sports historians. It is an incredibly well-rounded deep dive into the sports entertainment industry and ultimately what, you know, he challenges us to think about what values and ideals we want to instill in future generations. And this will be on sale September 8th. How to Astronaut is incredibly fun and informative. Terry Virts takes you behind the scenes on his journey from astronaut training to becoming the commander of the International Space Station. There is everything in this book that you didn't even know to ask about what it is like being an astronaut. He offers um, insight into the basic rules and lessons and procedures. He's had crew members die. How do you handle that when you're in space? How do you film an IMAX movie? How do you go to the bathroom? What is the feeling of, you know, stepping out into space for the first time when you're all, all alone? 
Um, it's just, it's very funny and offbeat um, and incredibly informative. And it goes on sale September 15th. I think how to books have really had a big moment in the last few months. Um, and this is the ultimate resource for any kind of skill or hobby that you might have any interest in learning. Um, it draws from decades of story publishing's how to books, and it is um, all beautifully photographed, very visual, easy step by step instructions on literally everything from how to carve a turkey capture a swarm of bees, create a butterfly garden, set up a dog agility course, keep a nature sketchbook, navigate by the stars. The list is endless and it'll give you things to talk about other than just what you watch on Netflix, which is pretty much all I have to talk about these days. Um, it goes on sale September 15th. Next up, we have Down Along with That Devil's Bones, which is tremendous. The writing in this book is amazing. The story is so relevant and important. Connor Town O'Neill is a journalist. He first moved to Alabama as a white northerner and he felt removed from the racism that Confederate monuments represented. And then as he witnessed people's responses to the battle over their removal, it became very clear to him that he does play a part because white supremacy is not a regional affliction, but is in fact coded into the DNA of American history. So through the lens of the conflict surrounding Nathan Bedford Forrest statues, he was the first grand wizard of the KKK and there are dozens of statues to him. O'Neill examines the legacy of white supremacy in America. Definitely for readers of Robin D'Angelo, Tony Horowitz, and it goes on sale October 13th. The Midnight Bargain is so much fun. It's romance meets mystery. Beatrice Claiborne is a badass sorceress, but she has to practice her magic in secret because men are the ones who are allowed to practice magic, and literally women are collared when they get married, so their mar magic that they possess doesn't harm any unborn children. But he just dreams of being a full-fledged magus um, and pursuing magic as her calling. Her family is in severe debt, though, and so she needs an advantageous marriage in order to help them survive. And through her luck and skill, Beatrice finds another way to become a magician, um, but she must enter into this pact with this man, who is wonderful. He's incredibly supportive of her. He loves her strength and her mag magic ability, and he's great. But if she marries him, she loses all of her magic and her lifelong dreams. And if she goes down that road, she loses this wonderful love. So how does she choose one knowing she'll forever regret the one lost opportunity? Um, that goes on sale October 13th. We Saw Scenery is a graphic memoir by superstar Emmy-winning comedian Meryl Marco. She looks at the diary she kept as a young girl um, and she takes you through her life as a teenager and she charts the divide between her adolescence and adulthood. She questions her younger self. She really reveals how much is opaque to people when we're that age. Uh, perfect for fans of Roz Chast and Linda Berry. It goes on sale October 27th. I love this book, Paper Bullets. I think it is tremendous. It is so well researched. It is such a fascinating story. I cannot say enough good things about it. It's the little known tale of two incredibly brave creative artists. They were living on the Jersey Island in the British Channel when the Nazis invaded uh, Lucy Schwab and Suzanne Malherb, and they distributed these paper bullets on Nazis clothes, you know, that was so dangerous in their cars and the newspapers they knew they would pick up, and they were insults against Hitler, calls to rebel, subversive fictional dialogue, anything they could come up with to demoralize and subvert the Nazi troops. They were ultimately captured, sentenced to death, but they survived. And today they're really known by their artist names of Claude Calhoun and Marcel Moore, and they've created all this amazing gender bending art. So this book is for readers of Jewish history, LGBTQ movement, art, political resistance. It has tremendous support from Hanton Sides and Douglas Brinkley. Please read it. Such a fan. It goes on sale November 10th. Wake Up Grateful is by Christy Nelson, the executive director of A Network for Grateful Living, and she really gives readers the tools to appreciate everything in life, which is particularly challenging now, but maybe never more necessary. There are questions for reflection, daily exercises, prompts for appreciating the fullness of life and taking nothing for granted. It goes on sale November 24th. How to sleep. Sleep difficulties affect millions of people. Hello, how are you? Nice to meet you, me. <laughs> um, this book addresses what to do and it is unique because Dr. Paleo has spent 25 years as both a clinical professor and a practicing sleep physician. So he has the theoretical and the practical approach. So he explains that nobody sleeps through the night. The need for sleep is biological, but the way that we sleep is learned. 
And once readers understand sleep, he is able to create this path uh, using a very flexible approach to getting better sleep. Goes on sale December 8th. In case you get hit by a bus, requires me to talk to you about mortality for a minute, but I am a huge evangelist for this book and I cannot tell you how much it has given me peace of mind. It's a three level program, easy to take steps. The authors are the founders of Everplans, a digital company that helps people of all ages organize their lives. So it's not for any age, it is for every age. And knowing, you know, that my kid is not going to have any questions about what happens when I'm no longer here is such a relief. It gives me such peace of mind. So that's my mortality talk. I am done now, but I cannot, cannot tell you how helpful this book has been for me. It goes on sale December 22nd. At the Edge of the Hate is the winner of the 2019 Penn Bellwether Prize for Socially Engaged Fiction. Mandy Del Nato is homeless at 20, but she's figured out how to survive in San Francisco's Golden Gate Park. She knows whom to trust, where to eat, when to move locations, how to take care of her dog, and then she witnesses the murder of a homeless boy and her entire world is upended. The cops want to talk to her constantly. The boy's parents find her. They're desperate to know what happened. They have so many questions um, and everyone's encouraging her to really go home. This can't be possibly better for you to be homeless. Go home. But what happens when that is not the answer? She can't go home. She doesn't. That is not a better solution for her. Um, it's set against the backdrop of San Francisco, which has been a very tolerable community historically, but is rapidly changing. Um, and Hillary Jordan said, this book pulled me deep into a world I knew little about, bringing the struggles of its young homeless inhabitants, the kind of people we avoid eye contact with on the street, to vivid, poignant life. That goes on sale January 19th. And I'm just going to finish up with some cookbooks. A Field Guide to Cheese is my happy place. That is incredible, realistic illustrations, over 400 cheeses from around the world, maps of their production, guides to their perfect pairings. Give Me Liberty and Give Me a Drink is so much fun. It's a cocktail book uh, with a tour of America's most bizarre booze laws, 65 recipes, 65 laws representing every state in the nation. Um, Cooking Through Cancer is from Richard Lombardi, the cancer fighting chef who shares the easy nutritious recipes that got him through his own treatment. And The French Laundry Per Se is an epic cookbook from Thomas Keller, one of America's most beloved and decorated chefs. Uh, each of these restaurants had three Michelin stars, and now you can cook as you would in these legendary kitchens. Not for the novice chef, but a remarkable resource. And then last slide, please. Baking at the 20th Century Cafe is from one of San Francisco's most talented pastry chefs. There's 75 recipes for her secrets for these incredible decadent desserts. Skinny Southern Baking is from Emmy Award winning chef Lara Lynn Carter. She reinvents her favorite Southern treats with no gluten, no dairy, and no refined sugar. And then Pie Academy is none of those things. It is tremendously delicious resource from the critically acclaimed Dean of the Pie Academy, Ken Hadrick. They are, um, it's a master class in pie making, step-by-step -step photographic tutorials for over 250 pies of every kind of flavor and style from berry, nut, fruit, ch custard, chiffon, cream, literally anything you could ever imagine. That is it for me. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Annie. And now I need pie. Uh, but next we'll hear from Elizabeth Anderson. Elizabeth has marketed fiction, nonfiction, poetry, lifestyle, and more at Houghton Mifflin Harcourt since 2010, with a specialty in library marketing since 2017. She lives in Boston with her husband and very nosy one-year-old who is probably banging on the office door right now trying to get in. Take it away, Elizabeth. She is indeed. And I'm just noticing I coordinated my shirt in my headshot to, to our logo. I'm very fancy that way. Um, so yes, hi everyone. I'm Liz. Um, in the next slide, you have my email address and um, the, our, a link to our Neck Alley and Edelweiss catalogs are hyperlinked in this um, slide deck. And give us a follow on our social channels. We are at HMH Books everywhere. So we will start off, I've got a lot to talk about, so I'll jump right in. On the next slide, um, we have How I Built This by Guy Raz. Guy Raz is the beloved host of the NPR podcast, How I Built This, on which he interviews the world's top entrepreneurs about their successes and their failures. This book is an extension of that very popular podcast, which has over 200 million downloads, by the way. This is a must read for anyone who's ever dreamed of starting their own business or wondered how trailblazing entrepreneurs have made their own dreams a reality. 
Um, some of the stories that you'll find inside, a former Buddhist monk decides that the very best way to spread, spread his mindfulness teachings is by launching an app, which we now know as Headspace. A sandwich cart vendor finds a way to reuse leftover pita bread and turns it into a million dollar business. Hello, Stacy's Pita Chips. A soccer player in New Zealand notices all the unused wool his country produces and figures out a way to turn that into shoes. The um, Instagram favorites, all birds. We are very excited for this one and Guy has a nice um, virtual tour lined up come September. So we really hope that this one is just everywhere this fall. On the next slide is Can't Even by Anne Helen Peterson. This is one that I have been shouting about for about a year now. It's all about burnout and millennials, which is a tricky topic actually. Um, millennials are often categorized as lazy or entitled, or, you know, the generation that all received participation trophies. But in this book, which actually started as a viral BuzzFeed article in 2019, and that article has been read over 8 million times, Journalist Ann Helen Peterson shows how millennials arrived here, and it's a really riveting examination of the cultural and political moves that, that got us here. You know, we were promised our whole lives that going to college would result in a decent job and at least a middle class lifestyle, but a lot of us graduated at a really tough time where there were just no jobs. And instead, we just have crushing student debt and have to drive Lyft and, and Uber on the weekends to make ends meet. Housing prices have skyrocketed, making the American dream of home, home ownership nearly impossible for so many. Healthcare costs are out of control, and if you don't have a job, that gets even harder. Um, there's a constant pressure to perform our best lives on social media, which is a pressure that never existed before and has, has real lasting effects. And just so much more. I, I highly recommend this book. If you're a millennial, you'll feel totally seen. And if you're not a millennial, but you have millennial children or coworkers that you want to understand, this book is just such an accessible and fair exploration. And that comes out in September. And next is Daughters of Yalta by Katherine Grace Katz. This is for the untold stories of women in history fan in the vein of Hidden Figures and Code Girls. Catherine Grace Katz uncovers the dramatic story of Kathleen Harriman, who was the daughter of the US ambassador to the Soviet Union, Sarah Churchill, who's the daughter of Winston Churchill, and Anna Roosevelt, daughter of FDR, who were brought by their fathers to travel with them to the Yalta Conference in 1945. And these were very real women. They had astute political minds and they influenced their father's own political opinions. They held damaging secrets for their father. They were young. Some of them had romances. Um, so this is just a really poignant um, look at a well-tread topic, but seen through an entirely new lens, through the lens of these young women, um, and one that I think is um, very worthy of this new, um, this new attention. And this comes out in September. Uh, next on the next slide is Pale Morning Light with Violet Swan by Deborah Reed. This is the first fiction that I'm talking about today. This is a really powerful novel about a life spent in art. Violet Swan is 93. She's a famous artist and she's looking back at her life and her family and the really unconventional road that she took in life. And of course, to add some tension, there are some family secrets to be uncovered. Um, but more than anything, this is just a really luxurious novel about art and about curating the life that you want for yourself. It's also a love letter to the Oregon coast, which is where it takes place and where author Deborah Reed lives. Deborah actually owns a bookstore in Oregon too called Cloud and Leaf. And she's been writing for a long time. And if you haven't read anything of hers, this is a great place to start. She just writes these really lovely, thoughtful, character-driven stories. Um, on the next slide, I will briefly mention the Best American series um, because we had the most incredible guest editor lineup this year, starting with the Best American Short Stories edited by Curtis Sittenfeld. Other notable guest editors, Diana Gabaldon is editing the science fiction and fantasy edition. J. Kenji Lopez-Alt is doing food writing. C.J. Box is doing mysteries. Andre Asaman is doing Call Me By Your, uh, is doing essays. He wrote Call Me By Your Name. Um, Michio Kaku is doing science and nature writing. So it's a really great lineup and we're doing a little bit more in terms of promotion and publicity. And we have these amazing new cover designs. Um, so overall, we just hope to see a nice rollout this year. On the next slide, 
This is Light for the World to See by Kwame Alexander. I don't have a cover for this because this is a late ad, um, but it will be up on Edelweiss and NetGalley and everywhere else very soon. Um, I'm sure you all know who Kwame Alexander is. We publish a lot of his books for young readers and he has his own imprint with us, Versify. His most recent book with us, The Undefeated won like every award imaginable, the 2020 Caldecott Medal, the Newbery Honor Book, um, the Credit Scott King Illustrator Award. So Light for the World to See, though, is, an adult, is for an adult audience. It is three of Kwame's poems collected together for the first time. The, the poems are The Undefeated, American Bullet Points, and Take a Knee. And all three speak to this current moment and the continuing Black Lives Matter protests. And all are a tribute to Black life in the US and give a larger voice and platform for how many people are feeling and will continue to feel. Um, so like I said before, this is a late ad, um, but it's one that I hope you don't miss as you're filling your fall shelves. On the next slide is Black Buck by Mateo Escarpor. This is debut fiction about a young black man working at Starbucks who upsells the head of a tech startup and ends up being offered a sales job there where he quickly rises through the ranks only to realize that it is not the place it seems. He gets swept up in the lifestyle and closing deal after deal and he alienates everyone in his life until he hits rock bottom. But then he comes up with a plan to help other people of color break into New York's sales force which changes the game forever. So this is like, sorry to bother you, Wolf of Wall Street. It's a skewering view of America's current workplace. And I just feel so lucky we're publishing this. I adore this package. Um, and Matteo actually does work in sales or has worked in sales. So some of this is drawn from his own experience working as a black man in sales in New York City. Um, and we have really high hopes for this one. And the next slide is Dear Miss, Dear Miss Cop which is the fifth book in the Cop Sisters series by Amy Stewart. I have talked about these books for almost five years now and I love everyone more than the last. They are novels based on the real life Constance Cop, who was one of the first female deputy sheriffs in the US. Um, the series started out in 1912 and um, in this fifth book, the, the US has now entered World War I and the Cop Sisters are spread out across the world. And this novel is written in letters between them sharing the details of their days during the war. These are wonderful books. They're sweet, but also really funny. And at their heart, they are truly just feminist stories that we are very proud to publish. On the next slide is Extraterrestrial by Avi Loeb. You may remember a few years ago, astronomers in Hawaii saw an object soaring very quickly through our inner solar system. Harvard astronomer Avi Loeb believed it to be not an asteroid or part of a star, but rather, buckle up, a piece of advanced technology created by a distant alien civilization. Now, this is a very controversial opinion, of course, and an extraterrestrial Avi Loeb outlines the theory and the profound implications that it has for all of us. On the next slide is Amy Gentry's third novel, following the best-selling Good as Gone and Last Women Standing. Bad Habits is set on a college campus, and it follows two women at different points in their studies, and it fits in with popular suspense fiction that explores larger issues of class, like the perfect mother and the perfect nanny. I love Amy's writing. It's always about something a little bit more. You know, they're not just standard thrillers, but they're about gender expectations or abuse, uh, or in this case, the class chasm. Um, and this comes out in February as a library hardcover edition. On the next slide is Land of Big Numbers by Ping Chen. It's a collection of short stories from Wall Street Journal correspondent, um, and it depicts a diverse Chinese people um, their history, their government, and how all of that has tumbled messily, violently, but still beautifully into the present. The stories are a mix of realism and tongue-in-cheek magical realism. So this is definitely an interesting presentation, and Ping proves herself to be both a journalistic critic and an emerging literary voice with this collection. So now I want to just quickly mention a few cookbooks. Um, on the next slide, I love bringing cookbooks with me to the shows. You guys love them too. Um, um, Jacques Pepin is, um, needs no introduction. This is quick and simple. These are easy, quick weeknight meals. And most impressively, Jacques has actually done all of the illustrations in the book. That's his other talent. This comes out in October. Next is um, two new Instant Pot Miracles, Vegetarian and Healthy. We've published a few other Instant Pot cookbooks already that have done really well. People love their Instant Pots and these appliances, these appliance cookbooks always get um, a lot of great attention. And then lastly is bread therapy. We all saw that bread baking really took off during quarantine. 
I think the mindfulness of it appealed to everyone. So this is our very peaceful addition to the field of bread baking. It's a mindful resource. And this is also out in October. So that is it for me. Um, pretty much everything I talked about is available on NetGalley Edelweiss. So check out our catalogs there. Email me if you have any questions. And um, thank you so much. I hope we can all be in person again soon. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Our next presenter will be Ellen Whitaker. Ellen is a marketing associate at Bloomsbury Publishing, where she has worked for almost four years. A graduate of the Columbia Publishing course, she previously worked at Workman Publishing and as a bookseller at Sundog Books in Florida. Thanks for being here, Ellen. Thank you. Okay, um, hello everyone. Today I'm starting off with, just go to the next slide, please. Okay, so today I'm starting off with Piranesi, which comes on sale September 15th. Susanna Clark is the author of fantasy classic Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, and this is her second novel, her first in 15 years. Piranesi is set in the kind of intoxicating, strange new world that only Susanna could have dreamed up. It is perfectly crafted, jewel, jewel box of a fantasy. For readers of Neil Gaiman's The Ocean at the End of the Lane and fans of Madeline Miller's, Miller's Circe, blurbs from Aaron Morgenstern and Madeline Miller herself. Here's the plot. Piranesi's house is no ordinary building. Its rooms are infinite, its corridors endless, its walls are lined with thousands upon thousands of statues, each one different from all the others. Within the labyrinth of halls, an ocean is imprisoned. Waves thunder up, thunder up staircases, rooms are flooded in an instant, but Piranesi is unafraid. He understands the tides as he understands the pattern of the labyrinth itself. He is one with the house. There's one other person in the house, a man called the other who visits Piranesi twice a week and asks for help with research into a great and secret knowledge. But as Piranesi explores, a terrible truth begins to unravel, revealing a world beyond the one Piranesi has always known. Piranesi has received five starred reviews. Next slide, please. Dancing with the Octopus, on sale September 22nd. For readers of Educated and the Glass Castle, a harrowing, redemptive, and profoundly inspiring memoir of childhood trauma and its long reach into adulthood. One Omaha winter day in November 1978, when Deborah Harding was 14, she was abducted from a church parking lot. She was thrown into a van, assaulted, held for ransom, and then left to die as an ice storm descended over the city. Deborah survived. She identified her attacker to the police and then returned to her teenage life in a, in a dysfunctional home where she was expected to simply move on. It wasn't until decades later that Deborah undertook a radical project. She met her childhood attacker face to face in prison and began to reconsider and reimagine his complex story. Deborah Harding untangles the incident of her kidnapping and escape from unexpected angles. I know it sounds heavy, but Deborah applies a light touch and it has irreverence, astonishing prose, and marvelous originality. Next slide. Shelter in Place, on sale October 13th. David Leavitt is a preeminent American writer. He's a finalist, he's been a finalist for the Penn Faulkner Prize, the National Book Critics Circle Prize, and the LA Times Fiction Prize. Shelter in Place is a darkly comic look at a group of New Yorkers immediately following the 2016 election as they flee the city for a country home to lick their wounds and process Trump's victory. It is literary, sarcastic, and nobody is safe from skewering. A magazine editor, an interior designer, two book editors, a choreographer, and a burgeoning writer with three cloned Bedlington Terriers, very Streisand-esque, are all taken to task. This title was selected well before COVID and still, and still feels strangely apt. In fact, David jokes that a natural sequel to this book would be to check in on, if, on all these people in 2020. It's great for people who love Rachel Cusk, Ginny Offal, and Justin Torres, who've all incidentally blurred the book. Next slide. American Utopia, on sale October 13th. From former Talking Heads frontman David Byrne and best-selling author, illustrator, and artist Mara Kalman, an inspiring celebration in words and art of the connections between us all. American Utopia offers readers an antidote to cynicism, bursting with pathos, humanism, and hope. Featuring his words and lyrics brought to life with over 150 of her colorful paintings, the text is drawn from David Byrne's American Utopia, which, is, which has become a hit Broadway show that will be returning in 2021 whenever Broadway reopens. It is also accompanying a big HBO premiere of a documentary slash concert film by Spike Lee of American Utopia that will have its first screening at the virtual Tor Toronto 
Film Festival in September. American Utopia is a salvo for kindness, a call for jubilation, a reminder to sing, dance, and waste not a moment, a balm for the soul from two of the world's most extraordinary artists. Next slide. Spirits of San Francisco, on sale October 20th. From two best-selling, prize-winning, and critically acclaimed contemporary chroniclers of San Francisco comes a rich, illustrator, illustrated, idiosyncratic portrait of this great city. Gary Kamiya's Cool Gray City of Love was a number one bestseller and an award winner. He now joins forces with celebrated bestselling artist Paul Madonna to take a fresh look at this one-of-a-kind city. Marrying image and text in a way no book about the city has done before, Gary's captivating narratives accompany Paul's masterful pen and ink drawings, breathing life in San Francisco sites, both iconic and obscure. Handsome and irresistible, much like the city it chronicles, Spirits of San Francisco is both a visual feast and a detailed, personal, loving, informed portrait of a beloved city. Next slide. Murder by Milk Bottle, on sale November 10th. For readers who love a cozy British mystery, here's a quirky and charming third crime novel from the New York Times bestselling author Lynn Truss. Many of, you have, many of you have probably heard of Lynn from her book, Eat Shoots and Leaves, which sold more than a million copies. Lynn's Constable Twitten series features her characteristic sense of humor in a new way. In the wake of two extremely high profile murder cases, and with the summer of 1957 finally wind, winding down, Constable Twitten is eagerly anticipating a quiet spell at work, but his hope for rest is interrupted when he and his colleagues find a trio of bodies, all murdered with the same unusual weapon, a milk bottle. Charming, witty, and full of this joyfully zany characters trust his readers have come to love, Murder by Milk Bottle will delight old fans and new alike. Next slide. The New Long Life, on sale December 1st. The New Long Life is a practical guide to how we can positively adapt to a changing world from the best-selling authors of The Hundred Year Life. Smart new technologies, longer, healthier lives, human progress has risen to great heights, but at the same time, it has prompted anxiety about where we're heading. Are our jobs under threat? If we live to 100, will we ever stop working? And how will this change the way we love, manage, and learn from others? One thing is clear. Advances in technology have not been matched by the necessary innovation to our social structures. Drawing from the fields of economics and psychology, Andrew J. Scott and Linda Gratton offer a simple framework based on three fundamental principles, narrate, explore, and relate, to give you the tools to navigate the challenges ahead. Next slide. Dark Salt Clear, on sale December 1st. From an adventurous and discerning new voice, a captivating portrait of a community eking out its living in a coastal landscape as stark and storied as it is beautiful. Before arriving in Newland, a Cornish fishing village, Lamorna Ash was told that no fisherman, would, no fisherman would want a girl joining an expedition. Weeks later, the only female on board a trawler called the Philadelphia she is heading out to sea. Newland is a town of dramatic cliffs and crashing tides and hardcore career fishermen complex and difficult heroes who slowly open up to Ash about their lives and frustrations, first in the condensed space of the boat and then in the rough pubs ashore. Determined to know the community on its own terms, Ash lodges in a spare room by the harbor and lets the village wash all over her and all of its clamoring, unruliness, thumping machinery, and tangled nets, its history, dialect, and centuries old industry. Next slide. Cheeky, on sale, December 8th. Cheeky is a funny, exuberant, inspiring antidote to body shame, a full color graphic memoir celebrating the imperfections of the author's female body in all its glory. Too tall, too short, too fat, too thin. The message is everywhere. We need to pluck, wax, shrink, and hide ourselves. Do not take up space emotionally or literally. Women are never just right. Well, Ariella Elevick, feminist and illustrator extraordinaire, has had enough. Her full color graphic memoir, Cheeky, takes an inspiring and exuberant head to toe look at her own body self-consciousness and body part by body part, she finds her way back to herself. Charming and hilarious, full of empathy and candor and gorgeously illustrated. Cheeky aims to inspire women everywhere to embrace their bodies, flaws and all, and also their respective bodies, needs, desires, and inherent power. Next slide. Outlawed, on sale on, in January, 2021. With blurbs from Aro Kwan, Esme Wang, and Jenny Zhang, this feminist Western in which we are pitching as the crucible meets true grit is a riveting adventure story of a fugitive girl, a mysterious gang of robbers, and their dangerous mission to transform the Wild West. It starts off like this. In the year of our Lord, 1894, I became an outlaw. 
set in an America that ceased to exist sometime after the Civil War and has, it, and has instead broken up into loose territories where women's fertility is prized above all else, this story follow, follows Ada, a heroine for the ages. 17-year-old Ada's look, life looks good. She loves her husband. She loves working as an apprentice to her mother, a respected midwife. But after a year of marriage and no pregnancy, in a town where barren women are routinely hanged as witches, her survival depends on leaving behind everything she knows. She joins up with the, with the notorious Hole in the Wall Gang, a band of outlaws made up of women who have all fled unsafe homes, led by a preacher turned robber, a non-binary leader known to all as the Kid. Charismatic, grandiose, and mercurial, the Kid is determined to create a safe haven for outcast women. But to make this dream a reality, the gang hatches a treacherous plan that may get them all killed. And Ada must decide whether she's willing to risk her life for the possibility of a new kind of future for them all. Outlaw dusts off the myth of the Old West and reignites the glimmering promise of the frontier with an entirely new set of feminist stakes. Next slide, please. If you'd like to request galleys, please fill out the request form that was shared in the chat. If you have any other questions or have trouble finding or using the request form, please email me at ellen.whitaker at bloomsbury.com. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ellen. Next up, we'll hear from Talia Scherer. Senior Director of Library Marketing, Talia Scherer, coordinates the library marketing activities of Macmillan's adult publishers, which include St. Martin's Press, Henry Holt, Tor Forge, Minotaur, Picador, Farrar, Strauss and Giroux, Flatiron Books, and Celadon. Talia was chair of the Association of American Publishers Trade Libraries Committee for four years and was proud to be named a 2010 Library Journal Mover and Shaker. Take it away, Talia. Thank you, Annie. You're a gem. Good afternoon, friends, and welcome to 11, 11 Minutes of Macmillan, Marvelousness, Mania, Merriment, Menorahs, wait. Here are all the various ways you can get in touch with us. We love hearing from you. So please reach out with any questions, concerns, virtual hugs, Next slide. If you'd like to download Macmillan eGalleys on Edelweiss, here's how. The instructions can also be found on our website. Next slide, please. And for those of you who participate in Library Reads, thank you. If you don't know about Library Reads, it's a monthly list of top 10 books voted on by you. You can find more information about Library Reads and how to participate on our website. Next slide. Genre for all. Do you love genre fiction? or perhaps you're ready to try something new. Check out Genre for All on the website for exclusive content, giveaways, recommendations, and more, all focused on fantasy, sci-fi, romance, and horror. Before we go to the next slide, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to our many virtual book buzz presentations. We have so many, and for every reader, they can all be found on our website. And now for the books. Next slide, please. Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Man by Emmanuel Acho. This is an urgent primer on race and racism and how to talk about race in America from the, most, from the host of the viral hit video series, Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Man. Oprah Winfrey is a vocal fan of Acho's and has become an engaged partner in this book's publication. Acho is a Fox Sports analyst and former NFL player. Next slide. Dark Archives, a librarian's investigation into the science and history of books bound in human skin by Megan Rosenblum. This is a book about books by a librarian. Megan Rosenblum is a medical librarian, AKA the perfect person to write about rare books bound in, wait for it, human skin. Next slide, please. The Book Collectors, a band of Syrian rebels and the stories that carry them through a war by Delphine Menui, under siege for years with its residents eventually suffering forced displacement the ancient Syrian city of Daria held a remarkable secret. Residents searching for survivors after a bombing discovered a motherload of books and began to collect more, within a month housing 15,000 volumes in a secret library where young men gathered to read, talk, and dream of a better future. In 2015, award-winning French-Iranian journalist Minoui learned of the library and interviewed one of the founders over WhatsApp and Facebook. Next slide, please. World Wild Vet, Encounters in the Animal Kingdom by Evan Anton. America's most popular vet and star of Animal Planet's Evan Goes Wild, Dr. Evan Anton shares stories from his experiences working with animals, every animal on our planet, across the world adventures, and a call to action to fight for our planet. Next slide, please. 
Stories from Suffragette City, stories of a fine and proper nuisance, edited by MJ Rose and Fiona Davis. This is a collection of short stories from best-selling writers, all written about the same day, October 23rd, 1915, a day when over one million women marched for the right to vote in New York City. The short stories come from leading voices in historical fiction, including our very own Kristen Hanna. Next slide, please. Makeup Breakup by Lily Menon. Annika clashes with a fellow app developer who stole her idea after a summer fling in Las Vegas. After he moves into the office next to her, she starts to realize he might not be as shallow as all his glitz and glamour gives off. With a South, with a South Asian American lead, Makeup Breakup is a perfect own voices addition to the rom-com space. Lily is better known as YA writer Sonia Menon, New York Times bestselling author of several crossover young adult rom-coms. Next slide, please. Finley Donovan is Killing It by El Casamano. Single mom and a floundering crime author, Finley Donovan accidentally gets the opportunity to start her own real life hitman service. But it turns out that real life of crime, real life crime is a lot harder to pull off than the stuff she writes about. This is for fans of Jennifer Lutz, Jennifer Cruzy, and Dorinda Jones. Next slide, please. The Lost Village by Camilla Sten. Documentary filmmaker Alice Lindstedt travels to a small village in which all of the residents mysteriously disappeared, including her grandmother's family, to make a film about what really happened there. Strange things ensue. This is a suspense with a twinge of horror. This is The Whisper Man crossed with Stephen King. Next slide, please. We begin at the end by Christopher Whitaker as a debut featuring badass 14-year-old Duchess Day Radley. 30 years ago, when Vincent King was a teenager, he was sent to prison. He has served his time and is returning to his hometown. But that hometown is the same place where everything went wrong to begin with. It is where he murdered Duchess Day Radley's aunt. When Duchess looks for answers and revenge, she not only threatens her own family, but everyone close to her. This is for readers of Snow Falling on Cedars and Cold Mountain. Next slide, please. The Survivors by Jane Harper. Jane Harper is a Library Reads Hall of Fame author of The Dry, Force of Nature, and The Lost Man. Kieran returns to his hometown with his wife and new baby, but not everyone is happy to see him after he caused the death of his brother years ago. On his first night back, someone is killed, and the comparisons are drawn between the deaths years before. Set on lovely coastline of an Australian island, sandy beaches, beautiful diving, magnificent cliffside caves, forbidding storms, unrelenting tides. Next slide, please. The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna. From number one, New York Times bestselling author Kristen Hanna comes a new novel that explores the Dust Bowl of the Midwest in the 1930s and the migration of many Americans to California. Elsa Martinelli must choose between staying in Texas and enduring the Dust Bowl or moving to California in search of a better life. The Nightingale is in active development for a feature film starring Ellen Dakota Fanning and The Great Alone has also been optioned. Netflix is currently filming a 10 episode series for Firefly Lane. Next slide, please. And thank you, TGIF, my friends. Thank you, Talia. TGIF is right. Our final presenter will be Christopher Connolly. Chris is the Senior Marketing Associate of the Library Marketing Team at HarperCollins. Hailing from Indiana, he spends his free time reading science fiction and wandering New York City parks. Bring us home, Chris. Thank you. Oh my gosh, the picture of me in the HarperCollins office. I'm getting a little sentimental. I'll forge onward. Um, hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, we can go to the next slide. I'm actually going to kind of go past all these intro slides. We have audio e-galleys on Edelweiss and NetGalley. That's a huge deal. Just go to Library at LoveFest. We have details on all of this, but I know that there's been a great response to that. We have a podcast, which again can be found on LibraryLoveFest.com. Next slide, please. Door to Door is our video series. Uh, it's on Facebook Live and then uploaded to YouTube as well. We have an amazing um, lineup of authors that we've had and that's continuing on. So just continue to check that out. Next Tuesday, we have um, Emily Danforth, author of Playing Bad Heroine, which is getting a lot of library hype. So uh, definitely check that out. Next slide, please. All right, and just two big books we want you to know about. One is Didn't See That Coming by Rachel Hollis, the number one New York Times bestselling author of Girl, Wash Your Face and Girl, Stop Apologizing. And then Barack Before Obama, which is a photography book. 
uh, that is kind of tracking uh, President Barack Obama's years prior to his presidency, presidency by his friend and former aide, David Katz. And it also has a foreword by Barack Obama. So that's coming to start first. Oh, and that is my dog. Next slide, please. Sorry if you heard that. She's super friendly and protective. All right, so uh, first book I'll be presenting is The Devil You Know by Charles Blow. Charles Blow's first book, First Fire, uh, Fire Shut Up in My Bones, was a New York Times bestseller, a Lambda Literary Award winner, and was long listed for the Penn Open Book Award. He's one of the most significant and treasured voices on race in the American media. Uh, his uh, twice weekly New York Times columns are some of the most widely read on the website. And this is a radical prescriptive book that is kind of taking into account everything that's happened in 2020. And in his own words, uh, race as we have come to understand it is a fiction, but racism as we have come to live it is a fact. The point here is not to impose a new racial hierarchy, but to remove an existing one. After centuries of waiting for white majorities to overturn white supremacy, it seems to me that it has fallen to black people to do it themselves. So uh, Charles has a radical prescriptive idea for how that can be done. And that idea is going to be announced later. Keep your eyes and ears open because this is going to be a huge book. Uh, we're just keeping our cards close to the chest, but it, it's a huge deal for us. That's coming in February. Next book, please. All right, The Blade Between by Sam J. Miller, who is the Nebula award-winning author of the YA novel, The Art of Starving. And he was also a finalist for his sci-fi adult debut, Blackfish City. So this is a more horror uh, novel by Sam J. Miller. We're kind of framing it as Queer Stephen King with Ghosts, which I think frames it pretty well. It involves a disgruntled gay photographer in New York who returns home to Hudson, New York, that is rapidly changing. He's been avoiding this town, but his father is sick. So he reluctantly returns and faces ghosts from his past, some real, some imagined, but as this, this uh, city is developed, certain ghosts that have long been hidden within the town are coming to the surface. It's great quirky characters, great sense of place. And again, it's pretty scary. And uh, Sam does have a fan in the one and only Paul Tremblay who calls it as addictive and brutal as it is smart and challenging. Next book, please. Uh, this one's getting a lot of internal buzz. We're excited about it. The Divines by Ellie Eaton. So this is a literary debut in the vein of The Girls, My Year of Rest and Relaxation, The Flamethrowers, and Little Fires Everywhere. And this is about an elite English boarding school, St. John the Divine, and the girls that inhabited it, who were rebellious, smart, uh, flipping their hair, harassing teachers, chasing boys, chain-smoking cigarettes. But some tragic event takes place and this English boarding school is suddenly shut down. And then 15 years later, you're following Josephine, who is now in present day Los Angeles and her marriage is falling apart. She isn't in touch with any of the girls who attended this school, but she keeps on returning to the memories and you know how this, these relationships formed her and why she's dealing with the issues she is. So it's flashing between present day and past and it gets whip smart. I like to compare it to um, Girls on Fire by Robin Wasserman, one of my favorite books that's come out in the, you know, the 2016 in this case. Just very, very smart. You can see that Sarah Perry quote, just a very you know, propulsive, again, biting, tack sharp, literary debut. So that's coming in January. Next book, please. All right, The Removed by Brandon Hobson. We're so thrilled to have Brandon on our list. This will be his first publication by a major publisher, but he has, he's very accomplished. He was a National Book Award finalist for Where the Dead Sit Talking. And this literary novel is followed, is centered around a family, this fractured family um, who, uh, with a Cherokee heritage, and basically this family has, in the past 15 years, has been grieving the death of the teenage son, Ray Ray. So this family is now fractured. The mother is taking care of the father who is dealing with the onset of Alzheimer's. Their adult daughter falls into these kind of uh, dizzying romantic spells. And then their son, Edgar, is dealing with drugs to deal with trauma of his own. He fled home long ago. But every year their annual buyer bonfire takes place where they come together to one, mark a Cherokee national holiday, and then two, to celebrate Ray Ray's life and to discuss his life. But as this date approaches, each of these family members in some way is finding themselves split between the real world and the spirit world. And again, this is embodying in different ways, but it's just really 
beautiful, tragic, and honest look at how we deal with trauma, but again, steeped in Cherokee myth and legend. It's a beautiful, challenging work um, from a really accomplished literary writer, and I think Lost Children Archive is a great comp, as is Freshwater. Uh, so this is coming in February. All right, next book, please. All right, Girl, Girl, Girl by Kenya Hunt. So Kenya Hunt is a cultural critic, very much in the vein of one of my favorite authors, Morgan Jerkins, author of This Will Be My Undoing. And so she is based in the UK. She's an American journalist, however, who has worked um, for various publications, including Grazia UK, L UK. She's very accomplished and she has this real gift at distilling complex cultural movements into essay form. And that's what she's doing. She's, she's observing you know, this time and place, what it means to be a woman, a black woman in today's society. It's often complex and conflicted and contradiction laden. And she just make, she shied, shines light on it in a beautiful and just provocative way. So um, this is coming in December. Uh, that's Girl, Girl, Girl by Kenya Hunt. All right, next book, please. Another HarperCollins favorite, The Captive by Fiona King Foster. So this is kind of a road trip novel. If any of you remember November Road by um, uh, Lou Burney, one of my personal favorites, you can kind of think of that with this, only it's a little more um, speculative. So you have this woman, Brooke Holland, who's living in this secessionist state, rural state, in a semi-dystopian future, but they're li she's living this rural life with her family. It's hard scrabble, but it's free, and she values that. But one day, this convicted criminal wanders on her farm, attacks the family, and Brooke pulls on past experience, deadly experience, and quickly subdues Stephen, this convict. Um, and then her violent history comes to the forefront and she and her family have to take this convict and make a perilous journey in the middle of winter to deliver him to the nearby constable. So it's dealing again with family dynamics as they're on this very, very dangerous path, you know, the trauma of the past, um, but it's also very propulsive and you have this kind of um, very powerful heroine in Brooke. It's really, really cool. Great writing. Um, so that is coming in January. That's The Captive by Fiona King Foster. Next, please. All right, this is one I think you all will love. It's A Thousand Ships by Natalie Haynes. So this is very much for fans of Madeline Miller, uh, who she herself called this book with her trademark passion, wit, and fierce feminism. Natalie Haynes gives much needed voice to the silenced women of the Trojan War. And that's what this is. It's the story of the Trojan War told through the women the women's point of view, so the women who are in the midst of this, you know, uh, you know, huge war that, um, whether it's the Trojan women whose fates were in the hands of the Greeks, the Amazon princess who fought Achilles on their behalf, to Penelope awaiting the return of Odysseus, uh, to the three goddesses whose feud started it all. So this is beautiful, epic writing, again, told through the point of view of women often who just, whose voices are quelled. So this is um, coming in January. And that's A Thousand Ships by Natalie Haynes. And then last, I have a uh, thriller debut, Pretty Little Wife by Darby Kane. So this is a domestic suspense novel that asks one central question, shouldn't a dead husband stay dead? So um, Leela is living in this idyllic college town, but not everything as it's seemed. A student has vanished months ago, and now Leela's husband, Aaron, is also missing. So seemingly unrelated, but then when a third unexplained disappearance occurs in the last few years, the police are desperate to find the connection. Um, you know, everyone's concerned. Leela, however, she's more confused because she was the last one to see her husband, more so his body, and now it's gone. So, da da da. What's her role in all of this? Uh, so this is coming December 29th. So that is Pretty Little Life by Pretty Little Wife by Darby Kane. And I think that's it for me with my books. Next slide, please. Do I have anything exciting left to say? More time, I would talk about these books, but just keep your eyes peeled. We'll be talking more and more and more on our website, librarylifefest.com. Next slide, please. Some great books coming in October. Make sure to get your votes in for library reads by September 1st. Uh, next slide, please. Instagram takeovers every Friday. Check them out. Instagram.com forward slash Harper Library. Next slide. 
uh, contact, us, contact us about virtual author biz. I can help you out. And I think the rest of these slides we can go through and my time is up. Um, so thank you so much, everyone, for joining us and for listening. If you have any questions, there's my contact info. Shoot over an email and uh, we can engage and converse and whatnot. So yeah, thanks, everyone. Thanks so much, Chris. Um, and thank you to all of our wonderful panelists today. Tomorrow, all attendees will receive an email containing links to today's slide presentation, title list, a certificate of completion, and also the video recording. For more about Booklist webinars, be sure to visit booklistonline.com webinars, where you can view archives of our past programs and register for upcoming ones. And if you haven't already, be sure to check out the Booklist Reader, where Booklist contributors post daily about all things books and library land. And I don't know if you knew, but Booklist is currently freely available to all. Start reading with our digital edition, a format that pairs the page-by-page -page reading experience of print with the convenience of online access at booklistonline.com. And if you're interested in becoming a subscriber, please take advantage of this special, special webinar offer to get print, online, digital, and archive access to Booklist for only $75. Thank you so much for joining us for today's webinar. One more thank you to our sponsors, Workman Publishing, Houghton Mifflin Harcourt, Bloomsbury, Macmillan Library, and HarperCollins Publishers. This concludes today's webinar.